Before we get into the real devotional, I need Grayson and Jesse and Matt to come up. And would you all stand? Stand! We're going to do the hippo song. Yeah. <coughs> sisters and you. We thank you so much for the day that you've given us today, the rain that you've blessed us with and keeping us all safe during the storm. Would you please just be with Jonathan tonight as he speaks, and would you please just help us all learn something from what he says, and please help would you please be with uh, just all those who have been sick, Lord, please be with those who have Falling away from your word. Please help them come back and realize what they need to do to take them closer to you. We ask that you please give us all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the
Look, we're almost there. Man, I am tired. I'm wet, I'm miserable, I'm hungry. How long have we been doing this? Um, guys, I, we've been out here for four days. How far was this hike supposed to be? Two miles. Two miles and two miles in four days? What? Let's get this. Let's sit down. Alien is just in sight. You guys realize that camp is almost over? Goodness, that's such a sad. Oh man, I know that's a terrible way to start off the Devo. But um, you know what an amazing week it's been so far. You know personally, I've had such a great time working with such an awesome team, being to play with other awesome teams. And I've been so encouraged to see how you guys treat your fellow campers, how you treat the staff. I just so enjoyed the beautiful singing all the lessons and the activities. And these are just a few of the things that make CBC so special. <coughs> so special. Maybe you guys feel the same way. I really, I really hope so. But you know, all good things must come to an end. And I don't know how many of you guys have actually seen The Hobbit, but I, I've seen it, so I love the movie. It's a great movie. I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, and I really love the dwarves. And I was really excited when they made a movie that actually focused on the dwarves. I just love that. But, you know, there's one scene from The Hobbit that sticks out to me the most. It's like when I think of The Hobbit, I think of this one scene. And it's when Gandalf says something neat to Bilbo. You know, Gandalf likes to say a lot of neat stuff. But, you know, and just how it's like right here at CBC, it's really easy, it's really easy for us to, to talk about this. <coughs> it's really easy for us to discuss, like, these serious, serious issues. I mean, there's no real danger. I mean, the temptations, they're a lot weaker here, surrounded by all these Christians. You know, just as Gandalf said, he said, the world is not in our maps and our books. It's not where it's easy. You know, guys, the world is out there. And just like with us, you know, our true calling, our goal, our mission, our own journeys, they're not here at CBC. They're out there. But you know what? CBC, it gets us ready motivates us. It, it prepares us. And let me, let me share a secret with you guys. You know, your counselors, your team captains, and all the staff here, you know, we want you guys to be ready. We want you guys to be ready. And if you guys only knew just how much the staff here give up for you guys to make sure that you're ready. I mean, all the time, all the, all the work, all the sweat, all the money, I mean, all the lost sleep, but you know what? It's worth it for us. You know, one thing I want you guys to do, one thing I want you guys to do, before this week is over, before camp is over, is I want you guys to find one staff member who's made this week special for you, who is special to you. I want you to tell them thank you. You know, these staff members, I mean, they've already shown that you guys are important to them. Try and say thank you to them and show them that they're important to you guys. Wow, what a great week. You know, we're so close to end this journey. No, we're not done yet. We're not done with CBC just yet. But, you know, we've had so much fun so far. All the activities, um, all the fun in the cabins, all the fun with the singing, and all the fun with our friends. But you know what? We can get kind of carried away. And we can get too focused on some things, if that makes any sense. We can kind of get worried over such little things. For example, like maybe maybe we feel left out at times. Maybe we really want to win that game. We get upset if we don't. Maybe we feel like we have to do such a good job at the banners, at the scavenger hunt, at the skits, at the Bible Bowl tomorrow night. And guess what, guys? You've done a great job so far. Great job. But you know what? Sometimes, sometimes we can get so fixated, so focused on these little things, we forget the bigger picture of why we're here at CBC. The big picture of what really matters, that's God. Now I want to turn to Genesis 22. I'm going to start in verse 7 um, to pick up where Grayson left off last night. Now Abraham is on his own journey at this point, all right? We already know that. So in verse 7, now Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And Abraham said, Here I am, my son. 
And Isaac said, Behold, we have the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, Listen to this. God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. <coughs> and so the two of them walked on together. Now when they came to the place in which God had told him, and Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood, and he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Now picture this. Abraham stretched out his hand and took hold of the knife to slay his son. I mean, this is it. We're at the moment of Abraham's journey. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here I am. The angel said, Do not stretch out your hand against him, and do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. I'm going to skip down to verse 14. Now Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. You know, Abraham, he had this call. He was on his journey. But you know what? You guys have been talking about someone else in your Bible classes. A guy named Jonah. You know, Jonah, he had his own calling. He was doing his own journey from God. But Jonah, he tried to run away from it. It didn't work out too well. Abraham did it. Why is that? Why is that? We know in verse 8, where Abraham, he says, the Lord will provide. Guys, that's a big trust in God. That's a big trust in God. And it's not a little thing. It's about the sacrifice your only son. But he didn't get worried about it. He didn't focus on it. He still had the faith and the trust to say, God will provide. And down in verse 12, when the angel says, Now I know that you fear, you fear God. You know, guys, real quickly, you guys know who God is, right? Yeah. All right. You know what God is capable of doing? All right. Do you guys know? what he has done for us. Well, you know what? Abraham feared God because he knew what God was capable of doing. He also believed God. He believed him. You know, when God had made a promise to him saying that through Isaac, Abraham's descendants would be as numerous as the sands on the seashore. Or if you guys can see tonight, I, I can't tell lights in my eyes, but as countless as the stars in the sky. See, Abraham, though he was tested, his faith was tested, he didn't lose hope. He still trusted in God. He believed in God. He believed that God will provide no matter what. Now, what has God done for us? What has God done for us, guys? What do you think? What's the big thing? What's the greatest thing God has ever done? Just say it. Son. Was that his son? Okay. There we go, Mr. Brett. All right. That's right. Jesus Christ himself. You know, I was told to go to um, Hebrews chapter 10, and uh, I'm going to go there, because it's the best place to go at the moment. Let's see if I can trade off. Here we go. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to start in verse 21. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, that's, that's Jesus, let us draw near to him, to Christ to God, with a sincere heart and full assurance. It's full confidence. It's full trust. Of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's no words. That's no distractions. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. Let's hold fast to this unity we have and this common belief we have here at CBC. For he who promised is faithful. You know, we made it for uh, Jesus and Company. Uh, Jesus, the name you can trust. You know what? God is someone you can trust. He is faithful. Let us consider how to stimulate one another, to encourage one another to love, to good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, not forgetting, not, not leaving, whether it's here at CBC, whether it's at a church service. And you know what? Whenever saints gather together, like here, that is worship. You shouldn't forget that. You shouldn't leave that. That's important. We shouldn't forget that, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more, <laughs> as you see the day drawing near. You know, because of the greatest gift, because of Jesus, you know, guys, we have a special place called Carolina Bible Camp. We have this. Because of Jesus, we have heaven. You know, 
personally, I just, I've always pictured heaven kind of like an eternal version of CBC, just in the very presence of God. A place like this where it just doesn't end. But, you know, at this point, I want to point out Andy King. He's right there. So, I want to point out Andy King. He may not remember this, but I, I sure do. It was that one of the youth hangouts we had at Lake Norman. And it was a months, months ago. And he made this sort of example for us. He said, salvation is just like ice cream. All right? Now, have your parents ever gotten you ice cream? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, your parents pay for that ice cream. You know, your parents <coughs> buy it for you. They gave it to you. And you guys get really happy, I bet. You say, thanks, Mom, or thanks, Dad. Well, guys, God sent us his only son. You know, we did nothing for that. We did nothing to deserve that. And yet he did it anyway for us. Now, how happy and how thankful are we? How do we show it? Now, I mentioned saying thanks to uh, the staff members to show them that they're important to you guys. But can we say thanks to God? Can we obey Him, focus on Him, and show Him that He is important to us? You know, guys, that is worship. It's God. It's obeying Him. It's focusing on Him. It's saying thank you. So, guys, you realize what God can do? Just think about what God has done. What can God do? He can do anything. So can we keep our attention on God? Can we focus on God? Here at the close of this journey at CBC and beyond on our own journeys outside of CBC. You know, God is so great. We should never have to worry about anything. We should never have to get distracted. Because God will provide no matter, no matter the situation we're in. God will always be there. He's someone you can trust. Let's go ahead and pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather here tonight, we're ever mindful of who you are and what you have done for us. We're so mindful of how you working through us, working through people, that we have such blessings as, as Carolina Bible Camp. We're so thankful for the opportunities we have because you choose, you choose us. You choose to work through us. It's such a great thing to be the tool of the living God. And Father, if there's one thing that these campers learned from this week, I ask that they can just remember to keep their eyes on you at all times they can realize just how great it is to be your tool. How great it is to be your servant, to be a Christian. Father, help us to always trust you. It's easier at CBC. It's easier. It's a lot harder out in our own journeys, out in life. Please, Father, just bless us. Please forgive us and please be patient with us. This is our prayer in your son's name. Amen. Ian, still got those marshmallows? Yes, sir, I sure do. All right, guys, let's go finish the journey.